Hi, my name is Masha Nuts, and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful friendship bracelet. So I actually made this bracelet a while ago, and I'm going to have the pattern linked to it below, but I think it's so beautiful. It's so simple and easy to make, and then at the same time it has a sort of unique effect to it. Especially when you use this many colors and you have these bright colors, it turns out amazing and I thought I'd just show you how to make it. So what I'm going to be using to make it is a technique called segment knotting, which is actually much easier than it sounds. So segment knotting is actually quite different from the regular type of knotting, and the regular type is when you go row by row as it is in the pattern. And if you don't know how to do that, I actually have a video specifically made on that topic, which I'll link as a card and um, up down below in the description. Um, but segment knotting doesn't use the row by row method. It still uses the same patterns, but it doesn't go row by row. Uh, I'm not going to go into extreme detail in this video of how to actually do segment knotting, but I am going to show you how to make this particular bracelet in segment knotting. So as you can see, this bracelet begins with a loop at the top, which is this beautiful teardrop, and it also has the colors of the rainbow coming down. I'm actually not going to be showing you how to make this specific loop in this video, but I'm going to be making a video on that separately very soon, and once it's out, it's going to be as a card and in the description down below, so you can check that out later. So the bracelet I already made begins with a red and goes down to the pink and then starts again with the red. I don't want to make the exact same bracelet again, so I'm going to be doing inverted colors. So I'm actually going to start with the pink, go down to the red, and then start again. So first, of course, you're going to start by choosing the colors that you would like. So for this friendship bracelet, as I said, I want to start with the pink. I pretty much want to use the same colors as in this one, but I want to go the other direction. So I want to start with the pink, then go to purple, blue, and the other way. The only thing is, actually, with this bracelet, I think that this blue that I used is a little bit too dark because you can see it very clearly, as opposed to the other ones that they sort of blend in. So I might not be using this particular blue, I might choose a different one, or maybe replace another color with it. I might just throw it out altogether. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you can use whichever colors that you like, however many colors that you like. Just keep in mind that the more colors you use, the thicker the bracelet is going to be, and vice versa. The less colors you use, the thinner it's going to be. But you can do this pattern with, you know, with however many colors. So now that we've chosen the colors, it's time to cut the string. And I always recommend to use quite a lot of string because it's best to have some string left over rather than to run out of string mid-bracelet. When you have string left over, you can cut it off and then reuse it in a different bracelet. When you run out of string, there are still ways around that you can add extra string, but it's just more of a hassle and it takes time and it's annoying. So it's best to use quite a lot of string. But whatever color you choose for the loop, so for this bracelet I chose the orange, you're going to have more of that string than of the others because obviously you're going to be using that one for the loop. So choose however long you want your string to be and then double that because you're going to be folding the string in half because of the loop, right? So the string is going to be folded in half at this point and so you're essentially creating two strings out of one. So double the length of the string that you want to use and cut them all in the same length, except for the color that you want for the loop, which in my case is gonna be this one. I'm gonna use this color to create my loop. Again, I'm not actually going to be showing you how to make the loop in this video, I'm just gonna show you a quick time lapse of me doing that. But if you want an in-depth tutorial on how to make a loop like that, then I'm gonna be filming a video on that quite soon, and once it's out, it's gonna be in a card and in the link in the description down below, so you can check that out and learn from there. Now that I've done the base of the loop, which is, you know, the yellow thing on this bracelet and the purple thing on this bracelet, I'm actually going to be going into the rainbow part of it. And here in this bracelet, I made the rainbow from red to pink, but since in this bracelet I want the rainbow to be inverted, I'm actually going to start with the purple and then go down to the red. Please do keep in mind that actually filming yourself making a bracelet is quite difficult. <laughs> because it is very uncomfortable to actually make the bracelet while I'm filming this. But you gotta do what you gotta do to get a nice angle.
so now that the loop is finished and the threads are in the order that I want them to be because I made them that way when I was doing the loop, it's time to actually start making the bracelet. And what we start by doing is we make a regular V-shape for the first row. So what we do is we take the outermost thread of our bracelet, which for me is this pinkish purple color, and we make a forward knot onto each of the other threads of the bracelet in the order that they are laid. And then we take this thread on the other side, the pinkish purple one, the outermost thread of the bracelet, and we make a backward knot onto each of these threads. So I'm going to do that quickly and show you what to do next. By the way, if you don't know how to make forward and backward knots, I actually have a video on that, so you can check that out. It's gonna be in the card and in the description below. So now that that step has finished, we have successfully moved the pink purple sort of color threads from the outermost side to the innermost side of the bracelet. Now we make a forward or a backward knot, whichever you're most comfortable with, between these two threads. And yes, as you can see, because it is the first row of the bracelet, it sort of looks a bit wonky and not exactly as an arrow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make a few more rows for it to sort of normalize and stabilize before I show you the next step. If you look at this bracelet, the one that I made originally, you can also see that the first sort of row is a bit wonky, but that is only because it is the first one and then it becomes beautiful and lovely at the middle. So I'm going to do a few rows and then show you the next step. Okay, so I've done a few rows and the pattern has started to normalize, so it's going to be much easier to see what I'm actually doing. This bracelet consists of repeating two rows, so two steps. And the first one I've already shown you is just the regular V-shaped bracelet, where you take the outermost string and you bring it to the center by doing forward knots on the left side and backward knots on the right side. So then, the second step is what I'm going to show you now. So you take the outermost strings again, but you take two of them. I'm gonna start with the left side, I'm gonna move the right side out of the way so it's easier for me to work with. I take the outermost string, which in my case is the sort of darkish blue, and I do a forward backward knot onto this other string. Okay, so now that that one is done, I still hold this string, but then I take the second one, the next one I mean, yeah? And I repeat this step. I do a forward backward knot onto this string now, which again, if you don't know how to make forward backward knots, I did a separate video on that, which is why I'm not showing you in depth here. I continue doing this with the other strings. I take the next string, take the previous string, and do a forward backward knot onto that one. And then again, I take the next string, and with the previous string, I make a forward backward knot. And I just continue doing that until I get to the center. Right, so now that I've finished this row, I'm going to switch. I'm going to put these to the side and bring the right side back. And I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing with the right side, except instead of a forward backward knot, I'm going to be doing a backward forward knot. So again, I take the two outermost strings, it takes me a while to untangle them because they're so long. The struggles of knotting thick bracelets, you have long strings. Anyway, uh, so I take the two outermost strings and then I do a backward forward knot onto this string. And then again, I take the next string, I do a backward forward knot with the previous string onto this one now. And again and again until I get to the center, which is where I'm going to show you what to do next. So, 
once you finish that and you get all of your strings to the middle, you are going to make a forward or backward or you know forward backward or backward forward whatever knot you like between these two strings and I'm saying whatever knot you like because they are the same color so whatever knot you make it's still gonna look the exact same so it really doesn't matter what you do I'm just gonna make a forward knot because that's easier so yeah that is pretty much the two steps that you need to do so, yeah basically that's it you make the V shape which is the first row that you do and then you do the forward backward on the left side and the backward forward on the right side which you connect in the middle once you get to it and then you continue doing the same thing you do the V shaped again and then the same you know forward backward backward forward thing so yeah and then you continue doing these steps until your bracelet reaches the length that you desire which for me is about 14 centimeters on average so yeah that's pretty much it this very simple bracelet it looks extremely complicated right when you look at it it looks like a very complicated pattern and when you look at the pattern it also looks extremely complicated but in reality it's just two steps that you need to continue making until it reaches the length that you need so let's head into the time lapse of me finishing this bracelet so I did readjust the camera for this time lapse because it is extremely uncomfortable to actually knot a bracelet while there is a camera in front of your face. So yeah, um, bear with me with the different angle, but I mean you can still hopefully see what I am doing and how the bracelet is forming. I don't know, I just love time lapses in general, especially when I'm making something. I love to see how these tiny little knots that I'm making create this beautiful bracelet in the end. And you know, when I'm making it myself, it's actually generally very slow, but then when I see a time lapse of it, it's like, wow, this is made so quickly and it's so beautiful. And you can really see the result of your work, which is, I guess, why I really enjoy making bracelets in general. Is that, you know, it seems like such a tedious task because you have to make these tiny little knots, but then you see the results of your work pretty much instantly. And that's what always fascinated me about it. And I love doing that. I think that's a problem with a lot of workplaces nowadays, that, you know, people are doing a job that they're being paid for, right, but they are completely unmotivated by their work because they don't see the results of what they are doing. Like, they're doing this job that there's been assigned from the management. They don't know why they are doing this job because management doesn't tell them the reasoning of what, you know, to do. They just tell them to do it. They don't know why, they don't know what the outcome is, and they're just doing this job, and, you know, they're not motivated to do it because they don't see the results of their work. This got quite deep very quickly, I did not intend it to get, you know, deep in any level at all, but that's what I mean, but by, you know, making friendship bracelets, I see the results of my work, and it makes me happy. And plus, you know, it's a great way to spend my time. I usually do it while I'm also doing something else, so I'll be watching a TV show or something, and I'll be making a bracelet, and it's a great way to express my creativity. I love it. it. It's been something that I've been doing for ages and I enjoy it a lot. And hopefully, you know, some of my enthusiasm for this will be translated into you and you'll be inspired to create a new bracelet today or maybe not even a bracelet, to just create something today. So yeah, I encourage you to do something creative today with your day or if, you know, it's you're watching this at night or something, tomorrow with your day, with your free time, do something creative, something that you enjoy doing, something that brings you some sort of happiness because, you know, that's what's most important in life, happiness. But yeah, hopefully you're enjoying this time lapse as much as I am because I love time lapses. So there you have it, the finished bracelet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you do end up making this bracelet, please take a picture and tag me on Instagram because I'd love to see your guys' creations. And you know, follow me on Instagram because there's a lot more cool content coming up and I love connecting with all of you. And go ahead, hit that subscribe and like button down below because I'm gonna come out with a lot more content for you guys. I've been really enjoying making friendship bracelets recently and I'm really excited to make more videos. And on that note, if you do have any video suggestions that you want to see, then leave them down below as well. I'm thinking of doing a video about my bracelet collection because I have collected quite a few bracelets over the years. So let me know if you're interested in something like that. And if there are any other ideas, also leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.